Amadou Diallo came to New York from West Africa to live the American dream. The 23-year-old wanted to earn a computer science degree, but that all ended in a burst of police gunfire just after midnight on February 4th, 1999. When I learned he was shot and killed, it was just... The world has stopped for me then. Four plainclothes NYPD officers said they thought Diallo was a rape suspect and that when they approached, they thought he was firing a gun at them. They fired 41 shots, hitting Diallo 19 times, even on the bottom of a foot. As he stood in the doorway of his Wheeler Avenue home in the Bronx, Diallo only had a wallet. His mother, Cario II Diallo, is still heartbroken 20 years later. The information kept coming. First he was shot and killed, and then it was the police. I could not believe it. Amadou would not be involved by with police. No, I don't believe it. It was hard to understand. Amadou! Amadou! She remembers little about the day she arrived from Guinea to the spot in the Bronx where her son took his last breath. The horrifying details of the unarmed, innocent man's death led to massive protest, civil disobedience, and arrest in the Bronx at police headquarters and on Wall Street. The officer's attorneys successfully argued they couldn't get a fair trial in the city because of the publicity. The officers were tried in Albany and acquitted of all charges. It doesn't make no sense. He, was, he lived in the Bronx. He was killed in the Bronx. Two decades later, Cario II Diallo tries to keep her son's memory alive here and in Africa through education and scholarships from the Amadou Diallo Foundation, funded in part by a $3 million payment from the city to settle the family's wrongful death lawsuit. What I try to do is to continue my journey, but transition from grieving to surviving and healing and advocate for the youth. In news reports, Amadou was often referred to as the West African street vendor. His mom says he was saving money for college. She says her son came from an affluent family, spoke five languages, and went to school in different countries. But he simply wanted to make it on his own. Who believed in America? Who dreamt of succeeding here? If he was alive today, I know he would be parent. He would be an entrepreneur. He would be helping people. Dean Meminger, New York One.